Hi everyone, Sean Walden with Secure Cyber, and this is your weekly cyber update. Well, effective immediately, Microsoft has decided to end any further development of the Windows Server Update service. If you were using this, uh, WSUS was used to push content updates, Windows updates to devices. This was mostly used in large enterprise or larger organizations that wanted to control that cycle. It doesn't mean that WSUS has stopped working. It just means that Microsoft is no longer developing on it and no longer taking any feature requests uh, for that platform. They recommend that you move to Windows Auto Patch, Microsoft Intune, and Azure Update Manager as soon as possible. Um, even after Windows Server 2 2025 came out, there are still the components to WSUS there. However, just keep in mind that that product is not really being paid attention to by Microsoft. Well, up next in the news, Disney has decided to ditch any further use of Slack from a communication perspective. Back in July, Disney had a breach that involved their Slack infrastructure and the stealing of 1.1 terabytes of information by a threat actor. There's no word on what Disney is moving to from a collaboration suite perspective. We suspect they will probably move to something like Microsoft Teams or something like that. A very interesting scam has appeared. Krebs on security is reporting that there are fake Facebook streaming sites for funerals that are being stood up. Yes, you heard me right. The pages have the picture of the deceased. It has the correct date and time of the funeral. And apparently it redirects you to a website where you pay a fee to uh, basically view the stream that doesn't exist of the funeral. Very bizarre. It's unknown how many people have been scammed by this or if it's successful. However, uh, we have uh, Krebs is reporting that he has seen a number of fake domains being stood up in order to uh, serve this purpose. So just be very careful out there, obviously, when you're clicking on stuff. And if it doesn't feel right, it probably isn't. Multiple news outlets are reporting that the new Apple Sequoia update is causing problems. If you're using VPNs or any type of security software like CrowdStrike specifically, uh, there have been reports of multiple problems with uh, Sequoia interfering or disabling security software. This is a very interesting topic. It's always very exciting. We've got the new iOS 18 that has been released. The iPhone um, 16 has been released also, and everybody definitely wants to rush out and get the latest in technology. I, for, I certainly understand that. However, we've seen a big lag in the amount of time that it takes for software manufacturers specifically to catch up with a lot of these updates. So um, just a general rule of thumb, wait about 30 to 60 days uh, before you start jumping on technology. And that first notification that you get the Sequoia is available doesn't mean that you necessarily need to rush out and get it, although people are going to. But just keep in mind that, especially if you're running sophisticated security software for enterprise, uh, or if you're um, um, if you're running VPNs like NordVPN or something like that, that there could be issues uh, with the new software update. So just be patient. Let some of those bugs get worked out. Just a follow up to the SeaTac Airport ransomware case: the Port of Seattle has decided not to pay a six million dollar ransom. Yeah, you heard me right, six million dollars. The FBI is inv uh, involved in investigating the case and obviously recommends do not pay the ransom. It's very interesting why this is even being entertained. It could be twofold. Obviously, this is a double extortion case uh, where they uh, have either not be been able to recover from the ransomware case um, involving any good backups, or maybe they've got some critical systems that didn't get backed up properly. So that could be one reason. And the second reason, reason, which is the double extortion piece, it is possible that they're requesting the ransom, uh, obviously, to stop the spread of the data. So paying the ransom, in theory, uh, tells the threat actor to not post the information. Um, but, you know, there's no honor among thieves. I, I say that once they have it, it's, it's done, right? I mean, even if you do pay them the ransom, which I would never recommend you do, there's definitely no promise that they've not spread any of the information or made copies of it for themselves. So back to the first uh, piece of the, uh, of the story, generally why, why we see organizations even entertaining uh, a ransomware payment is because maybe they had some backups that didn't work right and they're trying to restore key systems. 
We did notice that SeaTac was struggling to come up, which might be some indication that maybe their um, backup plans weren't working effectively. That's all we have for today. Thank you for viewing. Of course, like and subscribe this channel. We're getting a lot of great traction. Comments uh, down in the comment field, please. If you have questions about articles that we've uh, that we've gone over, we post all the articles down in the description. Um, and we definitely like to participate in interacting with our viewers. And you know, as always, as Hill Street Blues always said, let's be careful out there. <laughs>